This is John Steele reporting on Adventure. Zanzibar is a small island 25 miles off the east coast of Africa. Gin is still something you can drink there. But spelled the other way, gin means demon. But the demon I ran into there was a dame. I call this transcribed yarn the sweetheart of Sigma Key. You can divide Zanzibar into three sections. Stone Town the Victoria Gardens and the British Residency occupy the nice section. Then you walk across a bridge that spans what remains of an old creek, and you get to the other side. That's the common name for Nagambo. Nagambo might be called the Kasbah of Zanzibar, a confusion of twisting alleyways, small shops, mud houses, and a wide assortment of dives. It's not as bad as it used to be. There's a place there they call Rahaleo, a sort of civic center. They even have a movie house there and a radio studio. One of these days, the Kasbah of Nagambo will have vanished. But as of today, for the most part, it's still there. Oh, I forgot to mention the third area. That's the jungle. A great place for wild pigs and leopards. Me, I landed in Zanzibar in the late monsoon season, February. On my first night there, I walked across the bridge into Nagambo. The only American I ran into was a guy named McKee. His first name was Sigmund. He was in the spice imports business. John Steele, how are you, boy? Hey, hey, you're a long way from home. Well, I uh, sold my dad the idea of sending me here this time. Buying up spices? Yeah. Not in this neighborhood. Oh, no, this uh, is strictly fun. Hmm, it can be. Well, I might see you around, John, huh? Oh, I can take a hint. Yeah, I just spotted something I like very much. Watch your pocketbook. If I seem rude, it's because I am. <laughs> Call me in the morning. I'll buy you breakfast. And you can tell me all about it. I will. I certainly will. The object of Sig's interest was a girl. She had creamy white skin and raven black hair. She wore a pale green sari and golden sandals. This dame didn't play hard to get, and Sig made real fast time. It was like she'd been waiting for him all her life, waiting in a bar. What's your name? Marie. Marie? No, Marie. Sounds the same to me. <laughs> what is your name? Sig. Sig. Tell me something. Of course. What are you doing in a place like this? If they see me, perhaps they will let me sing or dance. Oh, you're an entertainer. I must earn money. Well, I guess so. My father, my mother, my little sister, my little brother, they must be cared for. You mean you support your family? <laughs> you seem surprised. Well, no, not exactly. Only oh, I... I, I could have married a very rich man. My family would have been cared for properly, but... But you didn't marry him? No. Why not? I was stupid. I didn't love him. Oh, like that, huh? Hey, that's all right. I am my father's daughter. He is American. He understands. American? Yes. Well, that makes you an American. Does it? Of course it does. Oh. My father is very sick. He cannot work. Look, maybe... Uh, yes? Maybe I could help him. Help him? Oh, no. He would not take money from a stranger. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean that. A position? Well, I don't know. Something, anyhow. I'm buying spices. Does he know anything about spices? He was in the spice business himself a long time ago. Well, what do you know? But he is so sick. He may be just the guy I'm looking for. I would be ashamed to take you to him. Ashamed? We live so poorly. Oh, look. But if you can help Certainly him... Certainly I can. Then I cannot refuse to take you to him. Lonely down here. You are not used to it. All these alleyways. I know all of them. You walk through here all alone at night? I am safe. Safe down here? I am. But you are not. 
What's going on? There are no police down here. My gun is very small. It hardly makes any noise at all. Oh, this is funny. Give me all your money. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Here. The money. Only the money. Take it all out. Oy. And I fell for your little Eva routine. The money. Don't try to follow me. More coffee, Sig? No, thanks. <laughs> you got off cheap. Yeah, I uh, could have been really mucked. You could have been knifed down there. It's a funny thing, though. Yeah. You've got the dame under your skin. That's right. Put her out of your mind fast. Her kind is dangerous. And your kind is high on the sucker list. John, look. Oh, a lady herself. Coming right into this restaurant. Looking for you. Yeah. You better stay here. She wants me to go over there. And you're going. I, um... I must. I've got to see what she wants. Tell me all about it when you come back. Yeah, I will. Now, don't tell me. But didn't we meet somewhere last night? Oh, we must have. I never forget a face. Turn me over to the police. What? I am terrified. Please have me arrested. Look, what is the gimmick this time? I had to rob you last night. They've been forcing me to do things like that. Forcing Even you? the lies I told you about an American father. My father is not American. Well, Helena, wait a minute. I have run away from them, but I must have protection. If you will have me arrested, the police will protect me. Look. Please I... do what I ask. Have me arrested. I think you'd better talk a little more. Let's go up to my room. <laughs> Zanzibar is Afro-Indian with a few more influences thrown in for good measure. It's colorful. The Swahili women in their gaudy congas, Muslim women in their shapeless purdas, Hindu women in their brilliant saris. And every known form of religion is practiced there. Every known form of voodoo and pagan worship. Add a few local prejudices and anything can happen. And happen for reasons that don't make sense to you or me. But they happen, period. The girl, Mari, was a product of Zanzibar. Her mind, her thinking, was a lot different from the thinking of my pal, Sig McKee. But underneath whatever she was on the surface, she was a woman, and a very beautiful one. Sig was conscious of that while she sat with him in his hotel room. Who are these people who force you to mug guys like me? If I tell you... Well, there's a law here. The police would never catch them, and I would be killed. This is fantastic. Is it? What happened to the money you took from me? They took it all. Why'd you run away from them? You would not understand. I could try. Do you see yourself? Uh, yeah, when I shave. The looking glass does not show you what I see when I look at you. No? I see something I have never known. Something very clean, wholesome, good, honest. Look, I may not be so wholesome. When I left you last night, I could see only the look in your face when I turned on you. All I could see was the hurt, the disappointment. That's okay, Mari. It was all I could see, except what I suddenly felt in my heart. You mean that, baby? No, no. You must not touch me. But I do mean it. I didn't hate you, Mari. I don't know what I felt. But I'm glad you came here this morning. But only once. They said I would never meet you. Who said so? My people. Oh. My sisters laughed at me when I said I would come to the coast and wait for you. Yeah. And now when I go back, I can laugh at them. Only they will not believe me. Go back? Where? I come from the interior, near Dunga. Oh, baby, listen to me. If I could think that you loved me... Oh, my darling. Will you... Will you marry me? Oh, no, no. Why not? No, I, I couldn't. Aren't you free to marry me? The temple would not consent. The temple? I would not be allowed to marry a Christian. 
Oh, Molly, look. Oh, no, darling. We must not even talk about it. Oh, what is this about you going back to Dunga? Unless you have me arrested. Don't be crazy. Then I must go back to my people. I would never be safe here. Look, suppose we got special permission from the temple. Would you marry me then? Oh, yes. All right, how do we go to this place? To my people? Yeah. There is a road. We can hire a motor car. You bet we can, sweetheart. So we're leaving in the morning, John. Bully for you. Oh, sure, I know. Oh, I could be wrong, Sig. Well, you are this time, boy. Where'd you say this place is? Near Dunga, the interior. That's jungle country. Well, I don't know. I... Watch out for leopards. Better take a gun. All right, I will. I couldn't uh, talk you out of this jaunt? <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, I was afraid of that. John, I have just met the girl I want to marry. Like I always say, tell me all about it when you get back. But don't you think I will get back? Hmm, you might. There are one or two roads that cut through the bush country. On the way, you pass by the ruins of palaces, mosques, and even long-forgotten cities. The green jungle almost hides the ruins. Sig hired himself a car, and he and Mari headed for the interior. A few miles west of Dunga, they turned off the road into a narrow footpath and had to leave the car there. Sig didn't know it, but this was strictly gin country. The natives worshipped demons. The end of the line, huh? We don't have too far to walk, darling. Your hometown, huh? I was born up here, yes. Well, come on, let's walk. Don't take that gun. No? It looks pretty wild through here. Well, there's no danger. Well, maybe not, but I'd feel a lot easier with the gun. All right, darling. I don't get it. It's all right. Take it. Well, I mean, you you had some reason. It's nothing. It's my people. A gun is symbolic of Europeans. They prefer not to be reminded of certain things. Okay, we'll leave the gun in the car. Now, which way do we go? Hold my hand. More close beside me. All right. No animals around here? Not during the day. At night time, sometimes, there are leopards. They even come down here on the road. Well, I hope one of them hasn't got insomnia and can't sleep during the day. There is nothing to worry about, darling. Mari, Mari, look. Yes? I may be crazy, but... You think we're being watched? Yeah. We are? Yeah? Only by my people. Oh, I see. The road is always watched. Okay, just as long as I know. Darling. Yeah? There is something I should tell you. Well, go ahead. You may find my people's beliefs rather odd. They believe in jinns. Demons? Yes. Okay. Well, you must not laugh nor show contempt. I'll be on my best behavior. Come along, darling. One more. I see you What One the... Word. Half a dozen savages sprang out of the brush. Sig McKee didn't see their faces. He couldn't. The men wore masks, and the masks were the heads of leopards. A little while later, Sig was tied up to a tree. Suddenly, he was alone, except for the girl. Marie stood in front of him, staring at him. Tell me something, baby. What do you do for laughs when you can't find a sucker like me? You are angry only because you do not understand. Look, sweetheart, what's the gimmick this time? Listen to the drums. Yeah. Yeah, they remind me of the cartoons. They're telling the djinn I have a wish to marry a foreigner. Yeah? You see, it is the custom among my people that when a girl wishes to marry a foreigner, she must offer him to the djinns as a sacrifice. Sacrifice? If the djinns refuse the sacrifice, then the girl may marry the man. But what is all this, Hoka? Oh, don't laugh at the djinns. Please, don't make them angry. You frighten me. <laughs> It was a real beautiful jungle night. Only my pal Sig McKee didn't appreciate it. He was tied up to a tree. He learned the men who had jumped him were priests. They belonged to the order of the leopard jinn. The leopard jinn was a demon who had the power to sanction or disapprove a marriage between a native girl and a foreigner. He took the form of a live leopard. If he sanctioned marriage, he wouldn't harm the foreigner. 
If he was against the marriage, he'd claw the foreigner to death. It was as simple as that, and there could be no mistake. No one stood around to watch. Everybody adjourned to the temple and prepared to stay there until just before dawn, at which time they would emerge to see if the foreigner was dead or alive. Mari stayed with Sig until almost the last moment. There's no use trying to talk to you, is it? Don't be afraid, darling. Oh, darling, she calls me. You are my darling. Well, I won't be if that leopard takes a dislike to me. I am going to the temple in a minute. Yeah, I would. I shall pray that the djinns like you. It's the leopard that I'm worried about. The leopard will be the djinn. Oh, come on. I I will go now, darling. No, wait. I must go. Look, just a minute. The djinn may be angry if I stay with you any longer. He'll think I'm afraid I may lose you, and that will make him jealous. Oh. Oh, let me kiss you once. You know, it would be very easy for you to cut me loose. I love you. Remember that. Listen. Goodbye, darling. Well, suppose nothing happens. It will. Suppose the leopard doesn't come this way. But he will. Well, suppose he doesn't. Do we try again tomorrow night for the jackpot, or do I go free? The djinn knows you are here. But if he doesn't come... It could mean he is too busy. Or not interested. It could mean he sanctions our marriage. I see. And then you would be set free, darling. Well, then I have an even chance. Oh, all right, dear. What our djinn? What our leopard? Sick. Mari. He's talking to you. Well, I don't understand him. Darling, he is the head of our temple. Mari, I'm... This is important to me, please. What did he say? He wants to know what you want with me. Tell him what I want with you. I want to marry you. I have told him that. What did he say? He wants to know how old you are. I'm 37 years old. I think he likes you. I'm so glad he likes me. Well, that's nice. I like him, too. Let me out of here, Marie. What is this? What? He wants to know, do you practice a religion? Do I practice? Tell him I'm a sun worshiper. What difference does it make to him? Oh, Sid, he asked you a question. He asked you if you practiced a religion. Yes, tell him I'm very religious. Okay. Wants to know where you come from. Where do I come? I come from America. I'm not going. I'm not going. Oh, other poor. I'm not. Come all by every table. What is your business? Tell him. I, you know what my business is. I'm here to buy some spice. Oh, oh, oh. I to come out to our two. I'm on our two. Can you take care of me? Yes, I can take care of you. If you just untie me from this tree, I'll take care of both of you. Who is this clown all done up in this leopard skin? Oh, darling, I told you. Look at me standing here like a crazy idiot. What am I going to be, a snack for some leopard? <laughs> Sig had no chance at all of the leopard not showing up. Mari knew that. The tree to which Sig was tied was directly in the path that pointed towards the water hole. A half dozen leopards might pass that way during the night. One showed up about nine o'clock that night, a big male cat. It appeared out of nowhere, silently. It halted about 20 feet away from Sig and stood there in the moonlight, staring at the man tied to the tree. It was a while before Sig even knew the animal was there. (gasps) Holy smoke. It was a funny thing. Sig McKee froze to his bones. but the perspiration poured down his face, he felt it burning into his eyes. If he had wanted to shout for help, he couldn't have. His tongue wouldn't move. This was it. He'd once been told you can scare a big cat by staring straight at it. He tried this. Only it didn't work. The leopard crouched a little and advanced a few steps towards Sig. The long tail switched a few times. Go on, beat it. Go on, beat it. Sig didn't even hear himself shout. The leopard didn't move. It just stared at the man. After a few moments, it backed away, puzzled. There was something he didn't understand. This man who just stood there, who had been waiting there. Suddenly, the animal vanished. It suspected a trap. It was taking no chances. What? You're alive. Huh? 
Oh, yeah, it must be. The sun is rising. And I'm freezing. I'll cut you loose, my darling. Yeah, you do that. Everyone has left the temple. They've gone to the village to get things ready. Ready? Before we are married your way. We can be married my way, darling. We can. There. You're free. Yeah, you bet I am. Move about a little. You must be numb. Do you say numb or dumb? <laughs> are you happy? I am. I'm so happy. The gin sanctions our marriage. Oh, we shall be so happy. You must be out of your mind. What is it, my love? Me marry you? Of course. Look, I have been mugged, made a jerk of. Oh, no. Oh, no, she says. But see... I have been tied to a tree all night, offered as a human sacrifice to a leopard. But the gin did not harm you. Gin, my eye. I'll take a double martini. We can be married now. Yeah, well, what role do I play in my wedding? Do I get to be the wedding cake that you carve up to serve to your relatives? Oh, Sig, darling. Sig, darling, my eye. Oh, come. What do you think, I'm crazy or something? Crazy? I would be to marry a dame like you. Why do you talk like this? Why do I... Oh, listen, sweetheart, if I ever run into you again, I'll blow my brains out just to be on the safe side. Now, goodbye, honey. I'll see you around if I'm real lucky. Darling, come back. Maybe you hop a slow freight, huh? Darling, come back. Come back. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back, and I've told you all about it. Quite a gal you picked up. Well, well, she never got dropped so fast in her life. You really ditched her. You know, though, she's a beautiful doll. Can you picture yourself married to her? Yeah. yeah but I'm glad I'm not. Now, you, you're sure about that? Sure about it. Well, you may never forget her. Maybe not. You must admit, though, she's different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, finish your drink. You need it. I think I've had enough. No, you better finish it, Sig. Hmm? Why? Have a look in the doorway. Oh, no. You're as nervous as a bridegroom on his wedding day. Don't say that. <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, baby. <laughs> Looked like Sig was hooked again. Marie stood in the doorway looking as gorgeous as ever. And her love for Sig was shining in her eyes as plain as day. So what could the poor guy do? There was no doubt in my mind from the minute she showed up. I'm not one to say it's a mistake to try to reform people. On the other hand, some people seem capable of being reformed. Marie, in spite of her odd associations, had acquired a background of education. Her ideas were a little different from some of Sig's, but they had one common plane of understanding. They were in love. And the sweetheart of Sig McKee became Mrs. McKee. When I left Zanzibar, they were away in Africa on their honeymoon. What happened there? I don't know, but I left word for Sig to tell me all about it when he came back. Maybe he will. Uh, come back, I mean. I'm still waiting for a card from him. Well, if I get one, I'll let you know another week. And speaking of the difference in backgrounds, reminds me of an adventure I had in India. There's a small town in that country called Bang Pukan. Enough sense of civic pride has established an ashram there. An ashram is a home for orphan girls of good repute. If they're lucky, the ashram finds them husbands, uh, for a price. Not all ashrams are what they're cracked up to be, however. The story of Ramset Rangaya and his great love for little Shana Scree may have its comical side, but it's not meant to be funny. It's a real adventure I like to call Ramset Rangaya. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.